If you're still riding high off that 25 to three New York football Giants win over the Carolina Panthers, like this video, just like the video because the New York football Giants finally won a damn football game. And no matter when it happens in the season, no matter if it's almost Halloween, it always feels good on a victory Sunday entering into overreaction Monday. So like the video, and in today's video, we're going to get into the biggest five New York Giants overreactions I'm seeing across the whole internet landscape, the Twitter scope. So coming up right now, the five overreactions following the win versus the Carolina Panthers. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And in today's video, it is overreaction Monday following a victory Sunday. The Giants, they are coming off a 25-3 win over the Carolina Panthers. And Twitter, it has gone crazy because the New York Giants are back in the win column. And in today's video, we are going to touch on the five overreactions that I'm seeing everywhere. Number one on our guy, Daniel Jones. I call him Daniel Jones when he plays good, and I call him Dan Jones when he plays bad. Yesterday, he was Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones is a franchise quarterback. That's been the talk all over the Twitter scope since the game ended and for the past couple weeks. And I'm all, I am cementing and planting my flag. I will not waver anymore. Hold me accountable, Giants fans. Daniel Jones is a franchise quarterback, and he is the man for this New York Giants team. The game yesterday, the stats... They're not going to pop off the screen. 23 for 33, 203 yards, one touchdown, a 95.9 rating. He rushed for 28 yards, but it was the little things that he did. He got, he moved really well in the pocket. The pass rush that was really after him in the first half, he was really good at making moves in the pocket, not to create running lanes, but to create passing lanes downfield. I like the way they rolled the pocket. Jason Garrett knew the offensive line was going to be in trouble this week with the makeshift shift that group they had, and Jones played well. He played like a leader. He played like a guy that capitalized not really capitalized, but played well, even though these guys on screen were not there. When you don't have your starting running back, your wide receiver one, your veteran, your third down safety valve in Sterling Shepard, and Kadarius Toney, the electric rookie wide receiver, and you don't have your security blanket, the left tackle, Andrew Thomas, whose play has picked up this year, and there is a definite correlation between the way that Daniel Jones plays and the way Andrew Thomas plays. When Thomas plays well, Jones is going to play well because you can just see the comfortability that Jones has in the pocket when he knows that his blindside blocker is going to be able to hold up ground and keep him clean in the pocket. Yesterday for Daniel Jones, one of my favorite games because he did it with a, let's just call it bad supporting cast, and he got the job done. Anytime the Giants win, I'm going to give props to Daniel Jones. But comment on this one. Get down in the comments. Be active. The more people that comment on videos – the more New York Giants fans are going to watch them because YouTube, they send off a signal on their algorithm. More comments equals more viewers. And if you get hit with a YouTube ad break, scroll down and answer the question. By the time you get back up, the video will be on. Answer it. Daniel Jones, is he a franchise QB? Type QB1 for yes or type QB2 for no. Overreaction number two. The New York Giants pass rush. It's back. Guys, let's calm down a little bit. The Carolina Panthers... Like the Giants, they have a makeshift offensive line right now. They were missing a couple starters, but I am extremely thrilled with the way that guys like Aziz Ojulari, Leonard Williams, and Dexter Lawrence played. Six sacks for the New York Giants yesterday, a season high. I can't remember the last time the Giants recorded six sacks in a game. I mean, anytime you get two and a half sacks from Aziz Ojulari, one and a half sacks from Leonard Williams, and you get one from Sexy Dexy, with Dexter Lawrence, he got a sacks as well. I mean, five pressures, two pressures, and three pressures. The Giants, they were all over Sam Darnold from start to finish. And guys, I'm here to tell you, if your eyes haven't already told you, Aziz Ojolari is the real deal. He can be a premier pass rusher in the NFL, and it's only going to take a couple more games for him to get loose and really find his turf when it comes to being an elite pass rusher. He possesses all of the traits that a pass rusher wants. 
He's long, he's tall, he's athletic, he has the bend to get around the corner, and his first step is lethal. And yesterday against the Panthers, he showed some technique and some hand placement and some types of, types of moves that he didn't have coming into the NFL season, and those were all on display yesterday. Aziz Ojolari, first three games of, th of the season, he recorded three sacks, and then yesterday, two and a half more sacks, five and a half sacks for him on the season. And I also want to give love to Leonard Williams. The last couple games, He's been playing really well. He now has four and a half sacks on the season. And anytime you get paid the bag like Leonard Williams did, you need to show up. And Leonard Williams, after criticizing Giants fans for booing him, which was kind of soft in my opinion, he, he criticized him, but he showed up. And after he recorded the sack, which essentially was a safety because Sam Darnold had that intentional grounding call, he was blowing kisses to the crowd. Leonard Williams, he loves this team. He's a heartbeat on this defense. And him and Ojolari really played well yesterday. The season, it's not over. There's still hope. I want to win games because it's just more fun when they win. And what's for sure not over is our coverage of the New York Giants here at New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. We're putting out free daily videos on the latest New York Giants news, r trade rumors, rumors, head coach hot, hot boards. We do Q&As on Friday where you guys ask me questions and I answer them. So join the fam. Go down and hit that big red button. We are in pursuit of 3,000 subscribers. And the rule here at Chat Sports is more subscribers equals more videos. So if you want more New York Giants videos, go down and hit that big red button and share this link to the channel with a friend. Overreaction number three. This one, it always cracks me up because it's, which I understand. I'm a Giants fan. I bleed New York Giants blue. And, and I, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve, but the one I'm seeing everywhere, Joe Judge, he's off the hot seat. We won a game. He'll be back. Let's calm down a little bit. My thing with Joe Judge is this. Your team is supposed to emulate your head coach. Joe Judge this week, they had an extra hour-long practice to focus on the fundamentals and the little things in the game. But then Sunday rolled around, and the Giants, they were sloppy. They were sloppy on the offensive line. There was a couple false start penalties. There was a couple offensive linemen blocking down field penalties, which is to be expected when you run, had a heavy dose of RPO action like the Giants had. But it always seems like this Giants team shoots themselves in the foot. They're a very sloppy team. They need to tighten up in those areas. And I, that's what I hold Joe Judge accountable for. <clears throat> if you want to be a successful team in the NFL, you can't beat yourself. It's hard enough to get wins in this league and beat other teams. And that's what the Giants are trying to do. They're trying to win. And that comes from the top down. But the mental mistakes, the self-inflicted wounds are nauseating. I'm tired of seeing it. And that, that falls on the shoulders of Joe Judge. You can't be this guy that preaches consistency, preaches fundamentals, and preaches the small things, saying it takes the small things to win, and your team does not do the small things at a good rate. The Giants, if they want any chance to come back and compete for a playoff spot this year, they need to be clicking on all cylinders, and they damn sure can't be beating themselves, or they will be watching the NFL playoffs go by for another year. But weigh in for me. Be the judge. If you were Dave Gettleman, if he sticks around, which I don't think he will, what would you do? Would you fire Joe Judge? Is Joe Judge off the hot seat, following the win versus the Panthers? If you think he is, go down and type your Y for yes, or if you think the, the hot seat is still hot, and Joe Judge needs to continue to stack wins in this 2021 NFL season, go down and type your N for no. This overreaction Monday video is brought to you by, by our friends and our proud sponsor, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code chat125 to get a 125% deposit bonus. Marshall, what does that mean? I'm not good at math. It means if you go down and you put $100 at chatsports.com slash bet using promo code chat125. If you put $100 into your account, BetUS will match that and put another $125 in your account. So you have $225 in your account to play with. If you're bad at betting and you're, you're, you're scared, you don't want to lose the money you just, you just used to sign up, BetUS is the place for you. They will give you a 125% deposit bonus. So one more time, head to chatsports.com slash bet you got to use that link, and you got to use the promo code CHAT125 to get the 125% deposit bonus. Thank me later. I promise you, you'll be doing that. <laughs> Overreaction number four. The Giants, 
After the big win versus the Carolina Panthers, they need to buy at the trade deadline. They got to go out. They got to go get more talent because the time is now to compete in the NFC East. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down, fellas. Look, the Giants, they need to be sellers at the NFL trade deadline. It is going to take a miracle for this Giants team to make the playoffs. And that's okay. It's okay to win games, even though your season and your playoff hopes are out of the window. The Giants, they need to learn how to win, like I was saying earlier in the video. And you don't do that when you tank. So what they really need to do is compete and compete and trade the players like Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram has fallen out of the rotation. He's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. His struggles have been well documented wearing a New York Giants uniform. He's lost us games. It just always seems like he's trying to do too much, and it backfires on him. This is a guy that I think a team would maybe give up a fourth or fifth round draft pick for, maybe the Kansas City Chiefs. They're a team that needs a, a spark plug, a guy that can go to an offense and be a dynamic playmaker. No, but no doubt about that. Be sellers, because please, I'm begging you, please, Dave Gettleman, <clears throat> don't make another Leonard Williams trade. When the season is over and you give up assets to go and get a player, especially the one that's in a contract year. So, Dave Gettleman, if you're watching, if you see this video, I beg you, Dave, please don't give up assets to make a trade. It's not going to matter. This season, it's a long shot to make the playoffs. Build within, win within, and show these young guys on the roster how to win and collect assets and maybe ship off a guy like Evan Ingram. Overreaction number five, the last one on the list. It was highly talked about coming into this game, and it's about Sam Darnold. Everybody knows what happened back in the draft when the Giants selected Saquon Barkley, number two overall, and they passed on the USC quarterback, Sam Darnold, and everybody freaked out. Oh, what are we doing? We're going to be in QB hell if we don't get Sam Darnold. Oh, we let Sam Darnold go to the Jets. Oh, my God, we're screwed. We're going to be the B team with New York. Ha, ha, ha. The Giants, Dave Gettleman, they're looking pretty good right now. Passing on Darnold is looking pretty good. He was absolutely terrible against the New York Giants. The Panthers, they may be the worst 3-0 football team of all time, and that's because their head honcho, their quarterback, is a phony. Sam Darnold, he sucks. And yesterday, he sucked. 16 for 25. Hey, wait. Matthew Peterson, is that a typo? Is that supposed to be 200 or 311 pass? He's telling me it's not. 111 passing yards for Sam Darnold against a New York Giants secondary that has been shredded throughout the 2021 season. I mean, guys, if anybody thought that Sam Darnold, look, I know Saquon Barkley may have not been the pick, but damn sure Sam Darnold was not the pick. So I want to know what you guys have to say. Be honest with me. I have a lot of New York Giants family. I've got New York Giants friends, and they wanted Sam Darnold. So speak up. Be proud that you wanted him. Be honest. Get down in the comments. Did you want the New York Giants to draft Sam Darnold? If you did, go type your one down for yes. Or if you didn't, go down and type your two for no. And if you typed your one, I'll be in the comments laughing for at you because Sam Darnold, he ain't it, man. I am thrilled the Giants do not have Sam Darnold as their quarterback. Guys, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the at, it's right under me, at Marshall Green underscore. I was live tweeting throughout the game yesterday against the Carolina Panthers. I'm a born New York Giants fan. My brother, my dad, his dad. It means something to me in our family to be New York Giants fans. My brother, he has a baby boy coming in this world very soon, and it's my job to make him a New York Giants fan. I already told him that. But hit me up on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore. I want all my followers to be New York Giants fans because I don't want to talk to any other NFL fans. But hit me up. Follow me on Twitter and send me a DM so I know you came from this video. And I might, I might just give you a shout out on the next New York Giants now.